Hello, this is Michel Leviathan Sorbet, and this is a new episode of Wojennik TV. Today I am extremely proud to present you a review of a game which was published with our Mediatic support, because Wojennik TV was one of the Mediatic patrons of this game. This game is Triangle Wars, published by the Polish company Dax Games in 2019. I have already presented this game during one of the earlier reviews when I have presented the prototype of this title. I explained during that movie that uh, this game will be launched on a crowdfunding platform and it did. It was launched on the Polish crowdfunding platform Spieramto and it, successfully fun it was successfully funded. So, thanks to it, the game is live and I am extremely happy and proud to present you the review of the final version of this title. The game is for 2 to 8 players and it is a tactical war game which will recreate or which will be set very, uh, in a very abstract way in the Second World War uh, times. It will be using formations from World War II, but it will be fought on a square map with triangular, with, with triangular spaces. The game was designed by Łukasz Kaczanowicz and Paweł Lichnerski and it was published, as I said a few moments ago, by the Polish company Dax Games. The minimum age of the player is 14 or is 14 years old, but it is also absolutely possible to play the game with a, uh, with a child of 10 years or higher. The game is for two to eight players because it has a f it has two different game modes and the second one in which you will be able to incarnate a soldier in on the battlefield is for up to eight players. So today a presentation of the game, I'd like to show you how the final components look like, how, what are the basic mechanics and at the end I would like to tell you a few words about the strong and also about the little weaker points of this game. So let's begin. Here is Triangle Wars in all its glory. Now, at first, let's take a brief look at all the components that we will be using during gameplay. The first and most obvious element is the game board. It is a square game board, a magnetic one on which we will be placing the playing pieces. This board is divided into three distinctive parts. The first one next to the border of the game board is used for tracking victory points. Each player will receive his or her own victory point marker associated to his or her own general and it is here that we will be tracking victory points. The second part of the board is used to place units which were eliminated or are awaiting training and are available for recruitment. Those units will be transferred from one from one space up to another and when they reach the recruitment area they will be available for placing in the playing area. This is the third part, so the center part of the board, which is the playing area on which the playing pieces will be placed. Before game starts, each player receives his, his own set of magnetic counters. Those magnetic counters will be used in order to indicate his headquarters, which will be the base from which they will be starting their expansion, where they will be recruiting the units. Secondly, they will receive a reserve of, of control, uh, control markers, which will be placed on the board in order to track control of different places. The board, as you can see, is divided into triangular spaces, uh, but four spaces enclosed in one small square will be constituting a sector. This is important because controlling a sector, so four triangles comprised in one square, will grant you additional points. 
Apart from those two types of markers, we will also be using unit markers. Those unit markers will also be triangular, as you can see. They will be of the same shape as, as control markers, and they will be placed onto the board in the same way that control markers will be placed. Now, I said that this board is a magnetic one, and so I can take this board and move it without the fear of, uh, of losing anything or of displacing anything. As you can see, I can just, uh, I can just move it in all the direction and still everything is at its initial place. So this is something really exceptional. Very rarely we see magnetic games using magnetic elements and war games using magnetic elements are even, uh, are even more rare. Apart from those magnetic elements, each player will receive also a distinctive set of unit cards. Uh, each unit, which has its own marker, which will be placed on the board, has also a card associated to it. So we'll get infantry units, we'll get sniper units, we'll get, uh, we'll get armor units or armored vehicle units, we'll get even aircraft. Each player will also have their own general. Each nation, so the Soviets, the Americans and the Germans, have a different set of generals. So each game we can choose or randomly choose one of those generals in order to increase replay value. Those unit cards have some information on them which are as follows. First of all, we get the symbol of such a unit, which is associated to the unit marker, which is then placed on the board. We have the name, we have the silhouette of such a unit, and then also we have different information. Now, the upper part tells us what will be the movement factor of such a unit, because in Triangle Wars we can choose four types of movement when activating, when activating a unit. The first one is Fortify. Now, when deciding to Fortify, uh, we can move a unit and at the same time take control of the spots by which we are moving. So if I move through, so, through those triangular spaces, I can also place at the same time uh, control marker in order to indicate that this uh, that this spot is controlled by my power. The second type of movement is conquest. Conquest is pretty much the same as fortify with the exception with the difference that this is a way of movement used in order to take control of enemy spaces. So if we want to take control of neutral empty spaces, we will be using fortify. But when we want to take control of opposing sectors, we'll have to use conquest in order to remove the opponent's control marker and replace it with our own. The third type of movement is a raid. Now, raid is the most uh, is one of the quicker ways to move our units, but at the same time, it doesn't enable us to take control of the spaces through which we are passing. We can move through neutral spaces, but we won't be taking control of them. So this will be a way to move quicker, but without taking control of some spots. Finally, the last movement is transport, uh, which is the fastest way, but it is possible to use it only through a, through a path of, of, continu of continuous uh, controlled spaces. So we have to control those spaces through which we are passing. On the middle part of each unit card, we get the combat factors of such a unit and we get two rows. The upper row is for a strong attack and the lower part is for a weaker attack. The difference, there are two differences between those two types of attacks. Now, as you can see, the upper one indicates, first of all, what is the range. This is the upper uh, number beside the triangle symbol, which shows us at which range such a unit can shoot. And the number inside the triangle in, uh, indicates 
uh, what is the number what, that we have to roll on two dice in order to score a hit. So for instance, using the uh, BA10 shooting at a distance of five, we will have to roll a 11 or higher in order to score a hit. Now, this is the stronger attack. So as you can see, the symbols indicated up here uh, show us that at most times we will immediately destroy the target. For instance, we'll destroy a plane, we'll destroy also an armored vehicle or an infantry unit. But if we attack an armor unit, we'll only, uh, we'll only um, shot it and inflict a hit, we'll damage it, we'll want, we won't destroy it instantly. The, low, the lowest row is used for weaker attacks which, as you can see, do not destroy the target, they wound it or damage it. Now, why to use a weaker attack if the stronger one is, most, is more powerful? The reason is, the lower attack, as you can see, has, uh, has um, better odds of succeeding, because if we attack using the weaker attack, we still get to roll two dice. So for instance, attacking a unit at a distance of four hexes, four spaces, requires us to roll four or less, which is pretty much easy. The second reason why those two types of attacks are differentiated is that when counter-attacking, we can use only the weaker attack. Counter-attacks occur when we try to destroy or or damage an enemy unit, but we do not destroy it. Such a unit, if our attack misses or, or the target is still here, it's wounded, it's damaged, can counterattack, but it counterattacks always using its weaker attack. The lower part of the unit has one or more abilities that are constant abilities that work all the time and also one special or even two special abilities uh, which require us the use of a special marker. Each such a unit will receive such a marker and when used such a marker will be removed. We can restore it uh, when we return to our headquarters or if we use another special ability. Now each unit is different, so each unit will have a different set of special abilities, uh, different mobility factors, also different ranges and weapons. At the same time, each army, so the Soviets, the Americans and the Germans, will work differently and they will have different units. Each army has also one card indicating a special attack. For instance, the Russians have the Katyusha, rocket launcher, which is unlocked when reaching a certain amount of points. Now, how to score points? Each player receives a general card, which indicates how to receive those points. Now, those points are attributed for wounding, destroying, damaging enemy units, for taking control of strategical uh, targets because on the board we'll be placing also strategical targets for both sides and controlling such a target not only will enable us to recruit on such spaces it will also grant us some points both when taking such, such an objective but also during each turn when we control such a place. We'll be taking also points scoring points for controlling sectors. So each time we accomplish uh, the total occupation of a square, which is called a sector, we also score a certain amount of points. The biggest uh, number of points is 480 for one thing. It is occupying the enemy's headquarters. It is instant victory. So this is a sudden death condition. If we occupy the headquarters of our opponents, if of our opponent, we instantly win. Because normally the game requires us to accumulate 480 points. And those points are added, are added for damaging, destroying units, etc. But if we manage to take control of enemy of the enemy headquarters, we can win instantly. Now, how a turn of Triangle Wars works like. 
First of all, the first thing that we do during a turn is determine initiative. Now, this initiative is being determined very simply. Uh, we just roll two dice and do decide who gets the biggest number, has the initiative, receives a dedicated initiative card, uh, which enables us to act first. During our during our turn, after determining initiative, we can recruit new units. Now, those units are possible are, are to be placed on our headquarters or on controlled strategical objectives. Only units on our recruitment box are able to be placed, are, are available to, to, be, to be placed on the board. We can recruit up to two units in our headquarters and additionally one unit on each strategical objective. Some units enable us to recruit additional forces because, for instance, the armored vehicles or the wheelies from the American perspective allows us not only to recruit such a unit but also to uh, to put passengers on it so it can transport additional units so when recruiting this unit we can instantly add also infantry units which will be stored on this vehicle and then 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 when moving this vehicle we can unload the infantry and the occupy uh, occupy surrounding terrain after recruitment, so after placing new units, which were maybe eliminated during previous turns, we also add points for controlled strategical objectives. If we do have any strategical objectives, we get the points for all of them during, this, during that point. After recruiting, we also move the units which were destroyed during previous turns. So those which were placed here are moved to the uh, to the training to the training box and from the training box they are moved to the recruitment box and they will be av available during next turn so in this game we have a recycling system which uh, which removes dead units or wounded units from the board to the dead box then to the training box and then again to the available blocks from from which they are recruited onto the playing area after recruitment we can move our unit our units each unit as i said earlier has different movement factors we get to choose from the different different movement types we move our units respecting some rules so we cannot for instance move through places occupied by enemy units unless we are moving a, an aircraft unit no more than one unit can occupy a, a spot etc after movement we uh, we resolve battles uh, so we can choose each and every of our units in order to shoot at enemy units which are at, uh, at a distance allowing us to shoot, we choose uh, the type of attack and we make die rolls. If the opponent is destroyed, we get points, the opposing unit is removed from the board. If it survives, uh, for instance, if it is damaged, its card is returned to the weakened side and if the, their weakened stats uh, allow it, it can counterattack using its weaker attack. After all combats are resolved, the turn ends and the next player acts using the same set of mechanics. The game lasts, as I said earlier, up to the point uh, when one of the players reaches 480 points. And this is pretty much it when it comes to the basic concepts and the basic elements of Triangle Wars. Now I would like to give you my opinion about this game and I would like to uh, to briefly uh, talk a little bit about the strong and a little bit weaker points of this title. When I first saw Triangle Wars, uh, when this game was first announced, I was really uh, interested because this is a very original design. I have already reviewed the prototype and some of the things that I have mentioned as being uh, uh, things that need to be clarified or changed were changed by the designers, uh, by the designing company. And 
Thanks to it, I believe that the game is better now when published in the final version, because I was not the only one to give feedback. DAX Games very carefully listened to this feedback, both during conventions and feedback given online. And because of that, the final version of Triangle Wars is a much better game than it was at its origins. First of all, I'd like to tell you a few words about what I think are the strong points of Triangle Wars. The first one, which in my opinion is... Uh, uh, is something which can attract additional customers, additional players, is the fact that this game is very original. Not often we see games using magnetic elements. Um, war games using magnetic elements, elements are even more rare. Here in Triangle Wars those magnetic elements were from the beginning something which was this WoW element which attracted additional additional uh, players to check this game and to support it when it was launched on Spiranto. Those magnetic elements are extremely functional and I showed you during, the, uh, during this review that those elements enable us to move the board without any uh, danger of displacing any elements. I have even made the cat test because my cat Diesel, which is uh, my pet, um, tried this game, I put uh, my cat on the game board and I let him walk through it. He um, checked the elements, he tried to move them, uh, he uh, passed through all that I, all that I was uh, holding on the table and he still didn't manage to move anything which was on the board. So this game uh, and the magnetic elements is an answer to all of you who are um, who are searching for a game which can be left on the uh, on the table without any uh, without any fear that you will lose uh, all your counter stacks or the placement of hundreds of elements uh, which are is extremely important for further gameplay so this is something exceptional this is something original and it is uh, at the same time very functional. What I really like in Triangle Wars is the fact that you receive three different and very asymmetrical armies. You get the Soviet army, the German army and the American army and although the number of units, the number of generals that you receive is the same in each army, each army has its own set of special abilities. It has its own set of different uh, attack values and each army will work differently. Because of it, uh, each game using any of those sides will look different and this is a great thing because it increases in a huge way replay value. I know of many war games which are very symmetri symmetrical. You get the same assets and you just try to uh, to use them in a better way than your opponent. Here not only you receive different assets in the term of their quality or diversity, uh, you, will, you will be able to score points in different ways. Because another thing which I really like in Triangle Wars is the fact that you get a huge palette of ways in which you can score victory points. You can score them by eliminating units. You can score them by damaging units. You can score them thanks to special abilities. You can score them by taking control of strategical objectives. Finally, you can even score points for taking control of, uh, of sectors on the board. And if you are extremely lucky or sufficiently effective, you can also uh, go for the sudden death and take control of the enemy's HQ. So you have a lot of things to think about and you get a lot of possibilities in uh, the term of scoring points. Another thing which I really like in this game is the fact that you receive two distinctive playing modes. I have showed you only one of them. This is the basic one in which you take control of one of the three armies and in which you go head to head or if you play a three players game you play against your two opponents. Uh, but there is also a second mode, a mode in which you can play up to even eight players. This is uh, the um, 
This is the second mode in which you can incarnate a soldier present on the board. So if any of you had a dream of becoming a triangle soldier, Triangle Wars is an answer. You can incarnate such a soldier and you can play this mode playing as a private because this is the private mode. This is also an interesting way of playing the game, much quicker but very different from the basic one. Additionally, you get really a ton of decisions during gameplay because you'll have to carefully decide how to use your units, how to uh, launch attacks, how to defend, when to defend, when to attack, uh, on what uh, possible ways of scoring points to concentrate, um, how to best mix your units because some of them will work better with over ones. You get also the possibility to transport units thanks to your... Uh, thanks to your airlift capacity etc so a lot of things are going on during the game which at the same time is very dynamic which is very quick you can easily end the game in 60 70 minutes and replay it so the replay value of this title is also a very strong point of this game you can easily play this game twice or even three times during one session and still have fun so what, in my opinion, are the weaker points of Triangle Wars? I'd say a few things. The first one, which is related to the quality of the rules, is something that I already addressed during the review of the prototype. So this is still a problem. In my opinion, the rules have some question marks inside. You do not obtain an answer to each of your doubts by just studying the rules. There are some things which, in my opinion, could have been written a little better. Additionally, you get typos, you get errors. So I know that this is the first game published by DAX Games, but each designing company should be really careful, should be very attentive when, uh, when preparing rule books. This is one of the most important parts of each design and I do not like games in which I find errors in the rulebook, both in the term of, uh, of um, blank spaces or blank spots concerning rules as in the term of errors um, understood as, as typos or grammar errors. Here, unfortunately, you get both. And I believe that this is also a lesson which DAX games should take into consideration when preparing new games. This part of the game publishing process is maybe the most boring one, but it is also one of the most important. The rulebook should be crystal clear and it should be absolutely error free. This is a must have. As the second thing, which can be a problem for certain of you, is the fact that this is a war game which very loosely is connected to World War II. It is supposed to be set in World War II, but it is extremely abstract. You get a gaming board representing Europe, so you'll get, for instance, the opportunity to use your armors, armor traveling through the Mediterranean or maybe through the uh, Donvan Sea. This is something totally abstract and I'd prefer a game map which doesn't show all the continent, which for instance shows the Eastern Front where we get only land. And I would be, uh, uh, I wouldn't have this feeling that something is wrong when playing on this board. Additionally, you get armies which have units taken from World War II, but you are not recreating specific battles, you're not recreating specific campaigns from World War II. You just get those units taken from World War II, transported into a world with triangles. This is somewhat abstract and it might be a problem for, for some of you. What I think is also a problem in this game is the fact that initiative is being resolved only by a simple, uh, simple six-sided die roll. This is an extremely important part of the game and being first or second sometimes will mean losing or winning because being able to play two turns in a row as first, um, two turns in a row um, without your opponent interfering will be sometimes a game winner. So determining this element by only rolling a six-sided die 
uh, six-sided die is in my opinion uh, something that influences the game's outcome without your without your input uh, i'd like to see <clears throat> some modifiers or maybe bidding for initiative or maybe just uh, just uh, mm, liquidating the uh, erasing this element and replacing it by the by the rules that you just play turns alternatively without determining initiative maybe it would work better uh, another problem which might uh, which might uh, happen in your games is the fact that sometimes the player who obtains a great advantage will almost certainly win the game you will have the feeling that you will be steamrolling because your opponent will not be able to respond and to score sufficient points in order to regain contact in terms of points. If you eliminate his best units, he'll have to wait up to three turns to once again put them on the board. So during this time, you'll have plenty of time to score additional points, even using the most simple ways of fortifying new sectors. And because there are some automatic ways to score points during each turn because you'll get points for controlled strategical objectives you can easily obtain those 480 points and win the game without your opponent being able to respond he'll not uh, have sufficient time to do it so maybe sometimes this will be a problem but again Trying Wars is a very quick and dynamic game, so even if this situation happens, you can just throw the towel and decide to replay a new game. Because there will be a point at which one of the players can obtain a huge uh, advantage. And this is the moment when, in my opinion, you should just resign, because the game will become a one-way uh, one uh, thing. Having said all that, I believe that Trying Wars is still a very interesting, very original design. I'm extremely happy seeing it published. I'm extremely happy, happy that Voynich TV was one of its mediatic patrons. I'm extremely happy that the final version of this game is so much better than the original one. I had real fun playing the final version. I have uh, real fun looking at all the gorgeous elements which are part of this final version. And I will be keeping my fingers crossed for Dax Games for its, uh, for its new project. Because this, this is a very interesting company made of people who love making new games, who also, who also are very keen on listening to potential customers. And these are key, these are key factors which can, grant, which can give uh, Dax Games really a great potential to becoming one of the greatest designing companies in Poland. So Triangle Wars, very original design, very quick, very uh, very quick game with a huge replay value. In my opinion, if you have the opportunity, you should definitely try it. This is not a heavy war game. You won't be using it as your main game event of the week, but it is a game which can surprise you in terms of replay value and dynamism. So this is something really interesting. I strongly recommend you try it. This was the review of Triangle Wars, published by Dax Games. Thank you a lot for watching this video, have a fantastic day, and see you next time.